All right, Gabe, Thursdays are always the time we have someone come in from the medical community to talk about you know, medicine and other things here on Fox Wilmington. So in studio this afternoon, this afternoon, this morning, Dr. Philip Brown is here, executive vice president, chief physician executive at New Hanover Regional Medical Center. We're talking about what is called the silent killer, abdominal aortic aneurysm. I'm going to go with they call it silent because it, does it just not present itself? There frequently are no symptoms. In okay. fact, more often than not, the patient will experience no symptoms. So it's one of those conditions, a lot like high blood pressure, that if you don't engage in your own health and check, get checked out when it's appropriate, then you may not know you have, in this case, a very lethal condition. When I'm going to my general practitioner and maybe I go through my, my annual physical, is, is there something that he or she will notice that may tip the scale towards I think we need to go and check this out. The most important things in terms of that annual visit, uh, well, first of all, is actually to have the annual sure. visit, which is where a lot of folks fall down. But when you get there, the most important factors around aortic aneurysm are historical. So those things would be if any condition such as that existed in your family, what your personal health history is, particularly with regard to whether you have high blood pressure yourself, whether you have high cholesterol, and especially whether or not you're a smoker, which is really the biggest risk factor for aortic aneurysm. Also, age is critical. Okay. These, these conditions are much more common once you're in the 60s and 70s, which is when the peak incidence of abdominal aortic aneurysm is. So those are really the key four or five factors. Is this something that plays hand in hand with things like heart disease. So we've, we've talked about, as we've had doctors uh, previously before you, especially in February, um, we were talking a lot about heart disease. Is this something that plays in with that? It is, it goes hand in glove with heart disease because the risk factors are very common. Those things like hypertension, high cholesterol, tend to run in families for both heart disease and aortic aneurysm and those may be a combination of lifestyle factors and heredity as well so these are really are a family of diseases whether you talk about heart disease or stroke or other types of arterial blockages or aortic aneurysms they're all uh, closely related in terms of what causes them and who tends to get them. I, I know quickly they're gonna have us wrap up here treatment if, if it is something that say I have how are you treating me for this? It depends a little bit on the anatomy, but the good thing uh, currently, and really for about the last 15 years, it's been a progressive movement. Most of these can be treated with minimally invasive techniques from inside the aneurysmal artery. Okay. So it's really almost like a catheterization type procedure inside the arteries that can be done in a matter of usually one to two hours and typically involves an overnight stay in the hospital and that's it and then you can be back to relatively normal activity within just a few weeks okay and again you heard the doc you heard it literally straight from the doctor's mouth it starts with that annual visit to your own doctor to keep on top of your health we appreciate you guys are always giving us such good information thanks for having us you're welcome we're going to come back with more after this